Hey, Bastish Beer for 64K, and welcome to episode number 22 of Pop Culture Quick Bites. So today we're going to be having a look at the newly released Zap 64 magazine issue number one by Fusion Retro Publications. This was released in March 2021. So if you don't know anything about this project, to bring the Zap 64 brand of magazine back to a modern audience, this is one of my old issues from 1989. If you don't know what Zap 64 was, it was a UK publication that used to do Commodore 64 games, reviews, do Amiga games, just information, you know, good old classic gaming magazine from the 80s and 90s. This is the first issue we have here. This clocks in at 60 pages. It's going to be quarterly, it's not going to be monthly like it was back in the day. Also a size comparison quickly here. This is the original, this is the size. It's much smaller, it's done in kind of like a fanzine style. If you've got any issues of Free64, it's the exact same size, as you can see here. Same size format. So both of these magazines cover the Commodore 64, but they are both very different in style, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. Bear in mind, Free64 comes out every month and it has 30 pages. This is 60 pages, but it's only quarterly. So before we go any further, let's take a look at this excellent front cover in a little bit more detail. Okay, so here's the first issue, March 2021. You can see there's an advert on the back here for Shift. It looks like a comic series, kind of like 2000 AD or Eagle. Trevor Story actually pointed this out online to me because I started collecting Zap from about 1986, roughly. This is actually a reprint of the first issue ever released by Oliver Frey. That's obviously Elite on the front cover, so that's what that is. And you see Soul Force is featured, the excellent Sarah Jane Avery game. And you've got 10 reviews, those are 10 reviews of brand new Commodore 64 games. Okay, so now let's start digging into the magazine's main features. And here's the contents page. And I really like this preview on the Empire Strikes Back game that's coming out. And this is an article on all the games by Cosmo Design, very cool. And up here we've got some returns of favorites. Zap back over here is new, it's reviewing games that came out after the demise of Zap64. White Wizard was always my favorite, RPGs and adventure games. And obviously News Flash is just news on all upcoming games as well. And I was lucky enough to talk to Chris Wilkins, the new editor of this magazine. And if you don't know who he is, he has the man himself. Hi there, my name's Chris Wilkins. Been looking after Fusion Retro Books now for about seven years. We, we started the company back in 2013 with the launch of the, the Ocean Book, which, which proved very successful and very popular with, with, with retro fans. So since then, I've been responsible for creating a number of other books, including those on the Spectrum, the Commodore 64, uh, the Amiga, and over the last number of years we've been producing annuals um, in the shape of Zap and Crash, and also the Fusion Annual. And I was also able to ask Chris in his own words to describe the new magazine for us. Well, with the launch of Fusion a number of years ago now, in the A5 format, the idea was to always try and transcribe the annuals into, into A5, so there's some longevity with the with the brand. So we've done that with, with issue one, um, we, we launched a Patreon, issue one, 60 pages, A5, um, we, we gave the, the first 500 persons to, to join up on Patreon a free binder. Binders are still available currently. Uh, there's a new order gone in only the last week or so because the demand for them is quite high. Um, so the new magazine is everything you know and love from the annual, just condensed down into A5. Issue one has been hugely successful. So sent out over 12, 1200 issue ones to date and, and they're selling every day. So there's a huge demand which makes the team very, very proud. Okay, so now let's look at what the bulk of the book is all about, and that's obviously Commodore 64 game reviews. It says it's got 10 reviews there. Those are obviously of new Commodore 64 games, games that have come out within the last year. There's actually 11 reviews in this book. They also review one from back in the 90s, one that never got reviewed in Zap 64 because the magazine was out of publication at that point. So you've got 11 in here. 
So let's jump on in and check out what the format looks like. Just like the Zap Annual, they haven't strayed far from the original. You got the name, who published it, the main story. You got three different people's mini reviews so you can get a broader perspective of what this is like. And the old rating down here is still the same. Presentation, graphics, sound, hookability, last ability and the overall percentage. As you can see up there, it's got a Sizzler Award. That means it's super good. <laughs> So you're probably wondering what the actual quality of the writing is like and I feel like all the people they've rounded up to do reviews and stuff were definitely fans of Zap64 back in the day or at least read it. You can tell by the way it's written it's very similar in that kind of vein. It's uh, kind of witty, it's got that little bit of humor, it's uh, very direct and very honest. So. If you liked that kind of style of what the classic Zap64 was like, this is very much in that kind of vein. They haven't strayed too far from the formula. And that goes for the whole production really. It does really feel like you're reading an old issue. It's got a lot of the old columns are back, like what I've already shown earlier. Also the quality of this. This may be small, but it's really hefty. It's got a good weight to it. Also the print quality is excellent the colors and the feel of the pages. The pages feel good. You know, this isn't a cheap production. This is really like them trying to bring this back and doing the original justice. So I also got to ask Chris what it's like to be the new editor of Zap64 magazine. It's a privilege really, uh, very humbling. I feel as if I'm a custodian of the brand. Ro Roger has been the editor, as I said earlier on, of, of Zap for, for the last number of years. There's obviously editors in the past who have filled the issues and I just feel a part of the, the next journey really. Look at taking Zap forwards as the magazine in the, in the next journey of its life. So try not to think about it too much, but as I said, it's, it's, it's very proud to be editor of Zap and, and the IP of, of the, the brand to be a part of Fusion Retrobook. So let's take a look at a few other of the cool segments in this magazine. So this is the good old letter section, you know, where people are complaining about something and then Zap responds, usually in some sort of witty manner. It's pretty much the same as it always was. This back in the day section is pretty much the same as Free 64, where they're looking back at old issues of Zap 64. The only difference is Free 64 has Julian Regnell as the host, so they get that win for sure. <laughs> this was always my favorite section of Zap, the adventure section with the white wizard and it'll show previews and reviews of obviously RPGs. And here is this really cool blowout on the Empire Strikes Back game being made for the C64 by Chris Stanley. I really like this Games of Cosmo design by Andrew Fisher. It's like a blowout on all the games that they released. I don't know much about that company, so it was interesting to read. And the Zap Flash section is basically previews of upcoming games and maybe peripherals, just good old C64 stuff. And I didn't want to show everything, I'll leave a little bit of a mystery here, but there's a lot of other cool little entries in this mag. And I also got to ask Chris how important it was to get the blessing of Roger Keane and Oliver Frey for this new project. Roger and Ollie um, being there has been absolutely superb with the launch of the magazine. Roger has taught me so much over the years in terms of publishing, in terms of InDesign, Bleed, getting print ready, items. Um, telling me black is not really black, I've learned a lot. So when, when doing the samplers for Zap and also for Crash, uh, there, there, there became a time where I had to show Roger and Ollie what, what I'd done. Um, and it was important to me then for them to say, yeah, we've got the essence of Crash or the essence of Zap down to, down to you know, fine detail um, and the blessing to continue and put it out there. So. Obviously, we're using Ollie's art for the for the covers of, of Zap. Um, we, we, we're sort of zooming in a little bit to make the cover look a little bit different, but obviously it's the original art. So even even having Ollie's blessing to do that is uh, is quite humbling. So uh, yeah, um, getting them on board and getting them to support what we do is, is is a huge huge deal for us. So my overall impressions of this first issue is excellent. It's definitely worth checking out. Now, what I mentioned earlier, I'm just going to compare it to Free Sixty Four. So the comparison between these two is quite different. You can't really compare them. They are both dealing with Commodore 64 games, but they're done in a very different style. So Free 64 generally looks at really obscure games. Obviously not Paperboy. They also obviously do ones that you would obviously know and love, but there's a lot of really obscure stuff. Also talking to programmers, deep dives into interviews with them, 
really nitty gritty about how these games were made. So that's what Freeze is all about, and a whole lot of other things, obviously. And on the other hand, you got Zap64, yeah, which is dealing with modern C64 games all the time. There are a little bit of flashback stuff here, but generally it's the new stuff they're looking at, and they're looking at previews of upcoming games. So the only negative I can really think about here, and this applies to obviously all magazines, is that some of the information here is going to be outdated by the time you read it. That doesn't make it irrelevant though, that's not what it's about. Obviously, as soon as you start printing something, it's already happened or it's gonna happen. It's probably a little bit behind. That doesn't matter. When I'm looking at uh, reviews and reading reviews, I really don't like reading reviews online. It's just something about reading it on a, on a computer. It just doesn't, uh, doesn't feel right. I guess I grew up with magazines, like a lot of you guys out there. So like reading it actually on pages, it just, on actual pages you're turning, it just feels so much better and this is the way I like to absorb information if I'm gonna read reviews. So obviously I'm a content creator, so if I'm gonna look for reviews, I usually watch a video and, uh, or make a video, that's how I do it. But if I wanna read something, I definitely don't go online and searching for sites, that's just not my, my style, that's just not how I feel it, I really like reading something tangible, so that's where this comes in, and Free64. We're kind of spoiled with content right now, and this isn't even all the fanzines or magazines that are out there right now. These are just two that I happen to be subscribed to. I would totally suggest getting both of these if you can. You're gonna get two different sides of uh, Commodore 64 style, but both are quite excellent. And I asked Chris whether there's going to be a revolving door on the reviewers like in the old days or whether they're going to try and keep the same team ongoing. The idea now is to, to keep the core members, those guys who review the games within the annual. Uh, I've continued now to, to be a part of the, the magazine. We've also got Christian Simpson, Perry Fractic on, on YouTube being, coming into the team as well, just to add a bit of depth. Uh, but the idea is to keep that team consistent now so that when you do read reviews going forward in the magazine, you'll know what these guys like uh, or don't like and then you can make a game whether the game that they're reviewing is good or not so yeah so they won't be revolving the team out we'll, we'll be keeping a, a consistent steady team so honestly as a Commodore 64 fan I would suggest getting both of these obviously if you can afford it if you live outside of the UK like I do you're gonna deal with post and packaging it's not that expensive for either of these so it's totally doable it's not like bringing in a massive book from the UK which just gets murdered in the shipping. <laughs> this is completely different. These are very small and very light so it's totally doable. And I'll leave links in the video description so you can actually check out both of these magazines, Zap64 and Freeze and see what they're all about. Right so we've got a Patreon for the magazine which is Patreon dot com forward slash zap magazine um, it's important um, for us to get as many patrons as we possibly can it gives me a good idea then how many magazines to order when we go to print um, it also means i can give more out to patrons as time goes on uh, freebies extras the idea is to to give out the, the zap annuals as pdfs going forwards uh, as well as offering other items and i just want to thank chris wilkins for joining me for this video and doing the interview thank you very much this is me, Bastish B at 64K. I hope you had a good time. If you can like and subscribe, they'll be greatly appreciated. I'll see you next time. Cheers.